rolling right through these heat cycles. Next one's an absent heat. So the silent heat we talked about before is a dog that actually is going in heat, but there are no outward signs that give us a clear definitive warning that the dog is in heat, other than possibly its behavior. An absent heat is a dog that just flat is not having heat cycles at all. And you can do the rational cytology we talked about in the last, uh, the last video, and they would still look like fried eggs. You would not see any quantified cells. This dog is not having a heat cycle. So th this gets to be a concern if you've bought a dog, you have a dog, and your intention is to have puppies from it, and now you know, you're, you've had the dog for a year and a half and it's never gone into heat. And, and it's not been a, a, a silent heat, but it's actually the lack of having a heat cycle at all. So this can happen, and the question is, what do you do about it, and how do you detect it, and what are the causes of it? All right, so a dog, let's just talk about when we're gonna classify this as an absent heat. I think a dog that's been two years and hasn't had a heat cycle, that is an absent heat. Uh, that's a dog that the first thing I would do is, well, I'd do a couple of things. I'd go get, um, well, let's talk about the causes of this, and then we'll talk about why we're walking into it. So the causes of this can be um, hypothyroidism, hypothyroid, hypothyroid. This is a dog that has a low thyroid level, so that can be detected from blood tests. So this is one of the things to do, is to go get a, a complete blood count, CBC, get a complete blood count, go look at the whole basic blood profile of this dog and in particular look and see whether you have a low high a low thyroid situation because if you do that can stop the whole thing from rolling and you can fix that by taking the appropriate synthetic high thyroid um, another one would be a, um, a cyst or tumors and these things can you can get a cyst or a tumor that produces progesterone and because of estrogen rather, and because of that, it stops a dog from ever starting its next cycle. So these are dogs that may need surgery. Certainly you can discover this by doing things like a uh, 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 ultrasound uh, to find out what's going on here. But these dogs may require surgery or maybe they just not, shouldn't be bred and they should be spayed. That's a, that's a vet, obviously you're not doing that yourself. That's a vet thing. Um, Another one is to house a dog, house with other um, females in heat, house with females in heat. This can help a whole bunch. Uh, kind of talking about the interesting parts about what's going on here. If you look at, for instance, girls, humans, uh, you know, adolescent humans who are uh, share, you know, a common um, uh, house, um, you know, like in, um, you know, boarding schools, for instance where all the girls are together, and what happens is they still start to, at some point, start to cycle at the same time. So you can take a dog that has not cycled at all and put it with a dog that is cycling, and that absolutely can bring a dog into heat. So that's a, that, that is a definite try right there. It's, I mean, if you've got a dog that's in heat around, it's a freebie, right? Just be a little careful about the fact that dogs in heat can have sensitive, you know, be a bit sensitive and you can get fights. So just be a little careful about that. But again, the same thing is if the dogs will get along to each other with each other, they'll put them in the same area uh, and see whether or not they'll bring one another in. Then there is products like PG600, which is actually a, uh, a, um, a hormone that's used for pigs. It's a pig hormone. And uh, I have actually bought this stuff and never used it. I have had friends that then used my PG600, some of them with success and some of them without. Um, I'm not a big fan of mucking around with nature, but there's sometimes where you have to step in when things aren't working. So this would be something that, uh, you know, I would not do PG600 unless I was at least a year plus past where I thought I should have been for a heat. So it really has been quite some time. This is a shot, you give them a thigh, a very small amount of it. You give it once or twice, and within a few days, the dog starts to show some signs of coming into heat. So that's something else that you could do right there. Let's see my notes here and see if I've missed anything else that I should have mentioned on, uh, um, absent heats and uh, what have I got here? Oh, a couple other things. Yeah, well, a couple other things. Now, I mentioned all of these problems. Other ones would be a malnourished dog or a dog that's uh, in poor condition, uh, you know, a dog that's compromised. Um, those could cause problems. Interesting thing about humans, you know, human um, gymnasts who get very, very lean bodies and very, very low fat content can stop having periods. That's a diet control thing and so certainly the same thing is true of dogs poor diet malnutrition dog 
that could cause a dog to not go into heat as well. So if you've got a dog that's not in poor condition, you wouldn't want to breed it anyway. Get that dog where it's a happy dog again. Okay, I think we've just put to bed uh, absent heat. Next one's prolonged heat. Here we go. Hey, thanks for watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here. And certainly this is, should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye. Thank you.